The next game I'll be talking about is the first installment of Sony's formal sports series they had at the time, and was a bit of a competitor against EA's Madden NFL series, though only briefly. And that's game number 30, NFL Game Day. The first one of their decent popular football series from Sony themselves. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment America and developed by Sony Interactive. The main focus of the game is obviously competing in an NFL football game, which includes all 30 NFL teams at the time, different fields, changing weathers, and the many different modes, either preseasons, full seasons, or playoffs. And that's about it. What? It's a football game in the 90s. Not every genre needs to have a story or a plot, especially in a sports game. Sometimes. But I'm getting off track, so going back to the main topic. Surprise, surprise, there is no development history of the title because it's a sports game. So instead, I'll give you a very short history about football as well as the evolution of the football games from its beginnings all the way up to this title, and also Madden NFL 2. More on that later in this video. Anyways, here we go. It all started back in the early 18th century of 1823, when the Americans, to be specifically the college students and the organizers, decided to come up with a new type of football sports after realizing that they were tired of kicking the football to the end rectangle goal, which was called soccer, and wanted to have their own unique touch on it because it was starting to become more of a European sport rather than an American sport. So, what did they do to make their own American version of football? Well, they did it by removing the rectangle goal and make it a rectangle end zone. Yeah, that was a bit of a change. But despite that, it still resembles soccer, though without the rectangle goals. However, they would soon find that missing piece to that sport and would be the American football that we know of today. And that came to be when Canada had their own football style similar to America. But the only major difference is that rather than kicking the ball, they grabbed and run through the rectangle end zone while avoiding the players. After that astonishing realization, they took that idea and implement it, and sooner than later, American football was officially created all thanks to Canada. Huh, who would have known that Canada is responsible for that American sport? Go figure. Throughout the decades, several new things were added to the football sport, like having a much larger field from wide distance, adding helmets and shoulder pads so the football players wouldn't get injured, having different score points like getting 6 points rather than 2 points for almost every single sports genre that you could think of, and etc. But that wasn't all that happened. During the beginning rise of American football, there were two different national football leagues that were rivaling with each other, being National Football League, aka NFL, in 1920, and American Football League, aka AFL, in 1959. So, in order to see who is the best, they decided to create the first world championship game between AFL and NFL. AKA the very first Super Bowl game ever created in January 15, 1967. It was proven to be successful and decided to do this every year since 1967. And it's still around to this very day as part of modern American culture, no doubt. And that's pretty much it for the short history of football. 
I could talk more about it like the formation of teams, the origins of quarterbacks, and how AFL getting merged to NFL in 1970, but I don't have the time to do so and it would take a bit longer if I did that. So I just want to leave you the basic history of all that stuff and whatnot. So moving on. Now, with football being a phenomenon and part of our culture too, it would be no shock to many different companies that they would make a ton of money based off the football sports on its own. And it wasn't just merchandises and toys, but it also manages to be in different media forms as well, like movies, TV shows, music, Yes, there is a media involving football, believe it or not. And the most obvious one of them all, video games. Surprisingly, the football genre actually started back in 1972, which you don't know was the very beginning of video games and also the console generations, with the very first football game being Football for the Magnavox Odyssey. And it's just Pong, albeit with a football field overlay on it. Yeah, you can probably tell this was made in the first generation, since it consists nothing but Pong lookalikes in that said generation. Moving on to the second generation, we would start seeing a few of football video games during that time which actually led NFL to license their first video game with the brand called NFL Football, which was published and developed by Mattel, and released it on both Mattel Intellivision and Atari 2600 in 1979. Though despite being the first NFL game, but they didn't use any of the NFL team names and player names, even though Mattel had license for it. But oh well. Some of the publishers and the NFL license would continue on to make more football games throughout the 80s, but to little to no success. While some of them were decent at best, but others were not and completely forgotten by the sands of time. The reason for this, because this was around the time when the video game console market crashed and was at the midst of a dark age between 1983 to 1984 before the third generation came into the US and introduced to the NES or NES from Nintendo to the market in 1985. But it wasn't just that, the football video games would suddenly rise and begin their own golden age thanks to a little known title released back in 1988 for the Apple II called John Madden Football, and thus would become one of the most well-known series in video game history, all thanks to a gameplay style that would soon become the template for all football video games from this point and forward. Now, I'm not going to go to a short deep dive history of the John Madden series, because that's not the game I'm going to be talking about, but we'll soon discuss it when I talk about Madden NFL 97 in a future video. So, even though I couldn't talk about its short history of the series, but what I would talk about is its success of the John Madden series, later renamed to Madden NFL, since the NFL officially gave the license to that series, starting with the fourth yearly installment, Madden NFL 94 with each new entry being better than the last. And at the time was doing great during the fourth generation, that was until the fifth generation came in. With the next generation blooming in the second half of the 90s, EA Sports, the main publisher for the series, wanted four titles to be released for the upcoming PlayStation. That being PGA Tour 96, the game that I talked about a few years ago, FIFA Soccer 96, the second installment of a new series EA Sports created, NHL 96, a game that I completely forgot existed, but reasons why in a few seconds, and of course, their most popular series, Madden NFL 96, the next installment 
of the series. All four titles originally promised and slated to come out in fall 1995 after the US launch and soon enough, it managed to deliver that set promise in half. Why? Well, because both NHL 96 and Madden NFL 96 did not have the time to make that set deadline. With NHL 96 being cancelled due to both EA and EA Sports not having any hopes for succeeding and didn't meet the quality standards of the game too. And Madden NFL 96 realizing that it couldn't make it past the fall 1995 deadline due to the hardware being new at the time. Originally, they were going to delay the game and was set to be released in December 1995 as part of a Christmas shopping season. However, that did not happen and ultimately cancelled the port once and for all. And thus, the only two EA Sports titles that ever came out for the PS1 were PGA Tour 96 and FIFA Soccer 96. Now, with the cancellation of Madden NFL 96, many of the football fans who owned the system think they were completely screwed of not having a football title in its first year and had to wait for a year to get the next title in the Madden series. However, that didn't happen. All thanks to Sony, or to be more specifically, their own first party publisher, Sony Computer Entertainment America, came in to release at least one football title in its first year. So they made a license deal with the NFL and gave the development by their in-house studio, Sony Interactive, the studio who made ESPN Extreme Games, later renamed One Extreme, and one of two halves of the first Twisted Metal, and thus, the very first NFL game day was officially created. And when it was released in North America in November 21st, 1995, and Europe in May 1st, 1996, making this the first North American game to not get a Japanese release, it was a huge success for Sony and finally delivered what the football fans craved for. Selling over 300,000 copies from its US release all the way to March 1996. Selling over 1 million copies and even managed Sony and Sony Computer Entertainment America to grow their sales to 53%, making a massive win for the company and publisher. It was considered to be the holding record for best-selling PlayStation game in the US, until Resident Evil was released and that became the holding record in the US a few months later. As for the reviews of the game, it was given positive reception. Examples like Electronic Gaming Monthly gave it a 9 out of 10, saying that it could very well be the Madden killer that everyone is waiting for. Scary Larry of GamePro gave it a positive review, calling it the best football CD to date, citing the graphics, accurate gameplay performance of each individual player, appropriately sized sprites, and comprehensive sound effects. David Hodgson of Maximum also gave it a positive review, with the one major gripe being the graphics, which it suffered from a bunch of jerky animation and feels like a last generation appearance. But at the end, he summarized the game, plays quite a mean game of American football without ever becoming boggled down in horrific amounts of tactical decisions. And last but not least was Next Generation, which the reviewer gave it a massive praise of the innovative controls, the beneficial of graphics, and the much responsive AI football players for a better football experience. Though the reviewer did criticize only one thing, and that were the unrealistic results of breaking up a pass, but still, he did conclude the game saying NFL Game Day isn't the perfect football game, but it is the best football game ever made so far. 
They also awarded it in their best sports game of 1995, ranked it at number 28 on their 1996 top 100 games of all time, and number 42 on their 1998 top 50 games of all time. And finally, it was a finalist for the Computer Game Developers Conference 1996 for Best Sports Game Spotlight Award, but lost to NHL 97. And that's pretty much it. So, now that I talked about the short history of football, the evolution of football video games, and the reception and magazine reviewers of this football title, does this still hold up? Well, let's head on to the review portion and find out. The graphics are mostly alright, with the fields having a bit of a nice fine texture to it. The football players, referees, cheerleaders, and a football car, for some odd reason, are also alright, despite being pixelated since at the time they couldn't really make 3D player models until the late 90s. And finally, the stadiums, although minor, do match some of the league's homeland, whether due to the weather condition or a bit of a logo change within the stadiums and fields. And that's it. The only major flaw is that some of the football players can be janky due to being sprite players and the crowds just being Photoshop texture, and that's pretty much it too. Nothing else to comment on the graphics, but just alright. Next is the presentation, and oh boy is not good and possibly the worst aspect in the entire game. Why? Well, first we have to go to the hub menu. Now usually in every single football game, or game in general, you have a standard menu layout with using the D-pad and two thumb buttons to either select or go back. Not with NFL Game Day, however, because for no damn reason whatsoever, they made the layout complicated. For example, if you want to switch the teams you have, press the shoulder buttons. For trying to look up the stats you have, press the left and right D-pad. And finally, to change the play modes, you have to press select to do it. But wait, it gets worse. If you want to get to the memory card or password screen, you have to press select twice to get to that, and not the axe button. This is just... wow, I have never seen a hub menu layout that would be this difficult to navigate through. And that's not even all of it. There are more complicated controls like turning on and off music and injuries or music control manual and players trade, but you already know where this is going, so I'm not getting into that topic. Speaking of players trade, the pictures of the actual NFL player teams feels off. Sure, it is impressive that they managed to get the NFL player's likeness to the game, since it was very rare to do so back in the mid-90s, but at the same time, the screenshots they took look incredibly bad and poorly out of focus. I think what happened is that the people who were working on this game didn't have enough time to get all the NFL team player pictures, so they just took random shots either from random screenshots, video footage, or magazine articles and just photoshopped it in the game hub. I would call this an impressive time saver, even though it looks like shit, but they couldn't even find almost every single NFL player team on time. So instead, they put in the photo not available or rookie with an untextured NFL player for the remaining NFL players. Never have I thought that they could botch something simple as an NFL player team picture roster this badly. And that's all the negative things I have to say. The only decent part I could say is the FMV cutscenes of the intro and the aftermath whether you won the game or lost the game, which are perfectly fine and mostly well animated. But that's all I have to say and nothing else. So let's move on to the next segment. The music. 
by that I mean the main theme for the intro, menu, halftime, and snippets of the gameplay is good and I like it, despite not being an NFL fan. And that's all I have to say about it. What, you expected this segment to be longer than 2 minutes? Well, that's very impossible to do that since there's only one song in the entire game. But hey, at least I'm saving you for this amount of time than my previous segment, so that's even I guess. And now, we finally go on to the gameplay. The different selections are a bit neat with three modes being the already mentioned preseasons, full seasons, and playoffs, so there's mostly different varieties of modes to choose from. Next is the controls. It's alright and a bit tight for the most part. The different strategic elements are good and mostly useful either on defense or offense. And the AI players can be difficult in most spaces, but sometimes they are balanced with a few hiccups aside. And finally, my experience from a non-sports title fan is okay. And that really sums up my own thoughts on the game. I'm very sorry that I can't be more informative about this game knowing that there are a few sports fans are watching this type of video. But I have nothing else to comment on and really struggled to talk about the sport genre that I'm unfamiliar with. All I can say that the gameplay is decent and that's about it. I've been saying that a lot in this video, haven't I? Anyways, which leads us to the conclusion. The game, at least to me, is alright, but average at best. With the graphics, gameplay, and music, though only one song, being decent at best and really have nothing else to say about these segments. The only exception that did really bad being the presentation due to the whacked hub menu and the badly photoshopped players, which shockingly I had a lot of things that I said from that segment than the rest. And that's really much it as far as reviewing goes. So what happens now after the game's release? Well, seeing that the game really sold well, mostly in the US, this would start to become a yearly series run. Starting with the second installment, NFL Game Day 97, released in 1996, and so on and so forth. Until 2004, but that's a story for another day in a future video. And so, to close this out, the first installment of the series was the only lifesaver to the football fans in the US back when the system was released, but years after that, it is considered to be forgotten and overall has aged poorly compared to its future installments, despite having decent gameplay, and unfortunately suffered from first game syndrome. And with everything said and done, I give my official rating a 3 out of 6. And that's another 10 games down on the list. Safe to say that the release lineup was a bit of a step up compared to the previous 10 titles. With the first half of it filled with so many memorable titles from Sony Computer Entertainment America being Jumping Flash, Warhawk, and Twisted Metal, and even games though based on PC ports can still be enjoyable and are very close ports to their computer originals, being Discworld and Doom. Though, unfortunately, the second half falters with some okay but not remembered to just straight up bad being Lemmings 3D and Algia Warrior F-111 Axe. But hey, even though it didn't have the best games during the second half of the third 10 titles, but it wasn't that big of a deal since the third 10 titles were released 12 days apart compared to the second 10 titles released almost 9 weeks apart. So at the very least, they didn't need to struggle or even wait for this amount of time for a new title to come out since there were already plenty of games to choose from by mid-November. So it's all good at the very end. 
But now, we only have 20 titles left, and this is the point where we start to see some random to obscure titles that no one talks about when discussing the early parts of the PS1 lifespan. Now, this doesn't mean most of them were forgotten. There will be a few titles that are well remembered here and there, but nowhere near as much classics compared to the first 30 titles for the most part. However, that is not the case with the 31st title. Why? Well, because next time on the PlayStation era, we finally get to talk about Psygnosis' fifth and final title for their 1995 lineup. Not just that, but their most recognized IP back when the company was still active at the time and the second racing series from the early years of the PlayStation right next to Namco's Ridge Racer and that game is called... Psygnosis' answer to Nintendo's F-Zero and their second most recognized IP right next to Lemmings. But the next video will have to wait until 2024. For now, I must go on and finally do the third part of a specific brick video game type series that is long overdue and must get to it before the end of 2023. Or 2024, depending either my scheduling or my laziness, which may be the latter half. Also, one last note, if I made any mistake or forgot to mention from the previous five games, from Doom all the way to NFL Game Day, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and this series so far. Now if you excuse me, I need to call my collaborator for the third part of that Brick series. Until we meet again, see you next time.